Welcome you to the Northwest ACCS Choral Festival. My name is Charlie Dowers. I'm the head of school for the Oaks, and it is our joy and pleasure to host you this evening. Now, before we get to the concert specifically, if you are a veteran of our armed forces, would you please stand up? blessing to be able to thank you on this wonderful evening. Tonight is special because we are gathered from a host of different schools. And there's a unique testimony that this gathering gives to what it is that you have engaged in, which is classical Christian education. Education to form your children's soul, heart, mind, and soul. What a gift that is. And to do this in fellowship, is a wonderful thing and to see that grow. This sound this evening is glorious. What they have been practicing and put together for you, I trust you will enjoy greatly. Before we begin, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we give thanks that you have given us the gift of music, that you have given us the capacity to worship and to know you. Father, we give thanks for this opportunity for this evening. Lord, I pray that you would bless each and every one of our students as they perform. Lord, we thank you for all of the work that went into this, and we thank you and pray your blessing upon each of the directors. Father, we ask that this evening would glorify your name and testify to your wonderful holiness. We pray this in your name, and amen. amen. Now, before we begin, I would also like to give one special thank you, and that is to our festival director, Mrs. Amy Kim from the Oaks, who's done a wonderful job of putting together this festival. Mrs. Kim, well done, and thank you. And with that, I hope that you enjoy the concert. Good evening, my name is David Erb, I'm the director of the choir today, and I'll talk more about the pieces as they come. Our theme is Holy, 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 the song that's being sung before the throne by the seraphim without ceasing, day and night. We're going to launch right in and sing one setting of that text, and it's in German, set by Mendelssohn, Heilig, Heilig, Heilig. And then in a bit we're going to sing together, the translation more or less is in your program on the, the inside page, the Schubert Sanctus. So you can look there for the, the words that we are singing.
That is our theme, Holy, Holy, Holy. It's a song that two men were gifted to hear while they were on earth. First, Isaiah, and we read about it in chapter 6. And he had this vision of what's happening before the throne of God, in the throne room of God. And the seraphim, the burning serpents with faces like eagles and calves and lion and man are seeing this without ceasing. And then John, while he's in exile on Patmos, got the same vision, but we get it again. And then beyond that singing, there's a response by the 24 elders who fall down. Every time they hear that song, they fall down. And they say, blessing and glory and power and honor be to our God. And then it goes on and there's more. And there's a sea without number of people singing before the throne of God. And I ask my students all the time, what's the one thing you know you're going to be doing in heaven? Not hope you're doing in heaven. Know you're going to be doing in heaven. And the Bible says we're going to be praising God in song. And we sing that in many hymns that we sing. We talk about that a lot. Well, I think this is a lovely picture of that, a foretaste of that. It's not very often we get this many high school students who actually believe what they just sang, offering it up to people that they know believe what they're singing. And then we're going to sing in just a minute, and it's even more of a foretaste. Because here's some of the folks we for the throne singing. And here's another whole host of people singing. And it's going to be glorious. So we're going to do that right now. I'm not going to sing anything more. We're going to sing Schubert's song to a different setting. He wrote this uh, in German originally. So it also was highly, highly, highly. But we'll sing it in, in English. Um, and if you don't know it, there's two verses. And you can kind of join in the second time. If you need to, just hum along. It's a new piece to you. And be thankful that a bunch of people know it. And uh, then it's a new thing for you to, to learn if you don't know it. But anyway, um, go ahead and stand and we'll sing together.
followed by, and the program says who's following that, so I won't introduce them all right now. But I'm going to hand the mic over to Mrs. Kim, and she'll just tell you about this piece because it's not in English. We are presenting a piece for you this evening, which we'll also be presenting at our Christmas concert in a few weeks. And it is an African folk song um, from the Yoruba tribe, Yoruba people, excuse me. And uh, this is the translation of it. We are glad that we have a father to trust. We are glad that we have a father to rely upon. Where was Jesus born? In Bethlehem, the city of wonder. That is where he was born for sure. Praise be to him. We thank you for this day, gracious Father. Praise be to you, merciful Father.
he looked to the day when it would be very normal that you could worship in, for us, English, but then you could also worship in Latin. And you could worship in Hebrew, the language that the Old Testament came to us in, God's people. And that you could worship in Greek, where the New Testament comes to us in, the language of the early church. That doesn't come to pass for most people, but he still had that vision. It wasn't only the native language of people. But this will be in our language. So this is a pretty straightforward declaration of the Word of God. And the Scripture tells us to teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Not just do that with the spoken voice and then sing songs to kind of help us to feel good together or worship God in it. He says to teach and admonish one another with the Word of God. So that's what you're going to hear now is the Word of God. singing with our singing. 
which is what we just heard sung in the Word of God. When that's when all this is being sung before the throne, the beams and lintels trembled at the cry, at the singing. The singing had so much power in it that everything shook. And that gives us a model of what we're supposed to strive for when we're singing. Is singing that shakes the rafters. Not with everything we sing. There's time for gentle lullabies and other things. But when we're doing this kind of singing, it should shake the rafters. And it should shake it in the beauty of holiness. Not just loudness, but the beauty of holiness. And you're seeing a wonderful example of that tonight with the choirs as they strive towards skill and beauty as the scriptures call us to sing in as well. So, please enjoy these three songs uh, consecutive by the Anderson Concert Choir.
So we'll sing here together in just a moment. Holy, 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 the hymn based on this song from Before the Throne Room of God, which we know so well. One of the things we talked about this afternoon was it's not only what you sing that matters, but how you sing it that matters. Just like it's not only what you say that matters, but how you say it that matters. And we communicate often more by how we say something than by what we say. And so we talk about different ways that you might sing holy, holy. And sometimes there's different ways you can deal with a song. Just like the text we've been singing has been done in different ways. There's not one possibility. But this song, the way the composer set this, this uh, hymn, is actually musically in the style, rather, of a march. Holy, holy, holy. And it's not, it's not some kind of swaying, get your big, light, big lighters out. And a sin to sing it that way, but it's not what the composer intended. He picked a particular style, and then our job is to understand that, and then to do it. He, he's trying to communicate something, and I think one of the things he's trying to communicate is in the very text itself. The text talks about the glory of the Lord filling the earth, first of all, but it also is some praise to the Lord God of hosts, or Sabaoth, as you've heard it said. That word means the Lord God of armies. And the armies that he marshals are many and manifold throughout time and history. They've had different purposes. But the army that he marshals most at this point are the sung praises of his saints. The most glorious picture that I say at almost every one of my concerts or classes or whatnot is Second Chronicles when Israel was surrounded by her enemies. And they said, Lord, what are we going to do? We're surrounded. I don't think we can handle this. And they just, he said, stand still. I'll take care of this. But they still suited up for battle, all the warriors. And then they put the choir out in front of the army. Not in the little pop tent in the back. They put the choir out in front of all the strong men of valor. And it says that while the choir was singing, God routed his enemies. The people of the earth that do not know or love Jesus Christ, of course they hate Christ. The Bible makes that plain. But they really dislike it when we sing. And they really dislike it when we sing publicly. They're okay if we sing in our little rooms by ourselves, or we don't sing loud enough that the beams and lintels shake in our buildings when they walk by on Sunday morning. But boy, if you start singing and they can hear it in the apartments next door, or you sing it in your backyard at your barbecue, or you sing it out in the public square, like I've heard it was done in the town that I live in recently, they might throw you in the clink. They do not like that. There's a lot of things we can do they don't care if we do. They don't care if we have a Christian soccer league. That doesn't bother them at all. But boy, if we start singing God's praises in the public square, they do not like it. singing praises to the Lord God of hosts. So please stand and sing with us.
Let me personally thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to work with all of these young people behind me. Uh, it's hard work. But boy, is it good work. I'll be tired tonight, but it's a good tired. It's the right kind of tired. You can be tired from singing. You can be tired from praising if you're working at it. They've really done wonderful, wonderful jobs. Again, I want to thank the, the directors for preparing them. This day is not a fun kind of work when the singers don't know what they're doing when they come, and we have to do this in one day. And they, they're doing really, really good work, um, just in their preparation and their attention and their desire to try to do it better. And I'd stop them and say, no, do it again. No, do it like this. No, 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 that's not it. And they, they were there, and they worked hard at it. And I think they're tired, too. Um, But they've also done other things together. They've fellowshiped with one another. They've met new people. They've eaten together. They've danced together. I don't know what else they've done, but we mainly we sang and we sang and we sang. But there are other things that happened today. And ask them about it. And don't let them get away with it was okay. It was fine. Because it wasn't okay. It wasn't fine. I'm prone to say that when my wife asked me. It was okay. It was, it was good. No, no, no. It was really wonderful. And it's a foretaste of heaven. That's what makes it so, so glorious. This last song we're singing, uh, the spiritual Ezekiel Saw the Wheel, I chose because it's related in the fact that there's these strange creatures. The, the creatures that we've been singing about in heaven are seraphim. And they have six wings. And they, the description we get is they only each have one face. It might be a different kind of animal-ish face. But the, the creatures that Ezekiel sees with the wheel in a wheel with all the eyes around it. They only have four wings and each of them have four faces, one on every side or direction. I don't know if it's fantastical or, or what, but that's the description we get. They're a different kind. And while the seraphim, what we see mainly is their job is to be around the throne and to praise and to praise and to praise and to worship. The cherubim are guardians and workers for the Lord. And the first time they show up in the Bible is after there was the expulsion of Adam and Eve. And the cherubim show up and they say, no, if you're going to do things your way, we have to guard God's place. And that happens also at different times. We talked about in the Isaiah text. It doesn't say Isaiah might be seated in the days of old. It says in the year that King Uzziah died. And he was the most famous king since Solomon other than Jehoshaphat. He was prosperous, he was successful, he had all sorts of stuff, he walked in the ways of the Lord until he got puffed up and prideful. And then he said, I think I'm going to bring the incense into the altar and do it myself. And the priest says, you may not do that. God will not have that. And God struck him with leprosy right away. He was put into isolation as a leper and he never ruled again. And that was his tragic downfall. God's cherubim, God guards his worship. God guards his holy things, and we are his holy things. And when we transgress his ways, he intervenes. And that's kind of in the midst of this fun song that we're singing about. Isaiah sees this strange vision of these creatures that are protecting and guiding and walking in God's ways. And that's what's circling the throne of God even now. So this is Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Thank you for being here and enjoy. <laughs> 